So today we're going to be talking about an article that I found online, which talked about NVIDIA working with a company called Hippocratic AI to develop AI nurses to help patients. So let me read the article to you guys so you have some context on what's going on, okay? This website is called Quartz. So the article is called NVIDIA is now powering AI nurses. The cheap AI agents offer medical advice to patients over video calls in real time. So to give you guys a little bit of, about my background, uh, up until very recently, for the past two years, I've actually been working as a telephone advice nurse. So I've done telephone triage for thousands of patients. I have a, a really good understanding of how this space works. So there were certain areas where I felt like maybe a machine could do this job better, but I never thought that a machine could do the entire job by itself. So let's continue with the article here. NVIDIA announced a collaboration with Hippocratic AI on Monday, a healthcare company that offers generative AI nurses who work for just $9 an hour. Hippocratic promotes how it can undercut real human nurses who can cost $90 an hour with its cheap AI agents that offer medical advice to patients over video calls in real time. So a couple things about this first paragraph here, AI nurses who work for just $9 an hour, that's really cheap. That's a lot cheaper than what any telephone nurse is going to be paid in real life. The part where it says that these nurses could be paid up to $90 an hour, this is actually true, uh, but only in certain parts of the country. I happen to live in one of the parts of the country that pays nurses a really high wage, uh, actually one of the highest wages in the US. So this $90 an hour figure is, is real. Uh, this is definitely not the norm though. I would say that in general, it's going to depend on uh, where people live, but most nurses are getting paid much less than $9 an hour. Voice-based digital agents powered by generative AI can usher in an age of abundance in healthcare, but only if the technology responds to patients as a human would. There's a video here, I haven't watched it yet, but the idea behind this product is, it looks like they're trying to do some type of video appointment with the patient. I can say that most advice lines are telephone lines, so that means that we're, we're only talking with the patients on the telephone. I, I can't imagine a scenario where you would have a triage nurse doing something over video because even if we can see what's going on with the patient, as nurses, it's not our job to diagnose what's wrong with the patient. That's what the doctor's job is. So our job is really to collect as much information as possible and help guide the patient to the safest outcome. So whether that be making a recommendation for them to go to the emergency room, or a same day appointment or next day appointment or advice. It really depends on what their symptoms are. And even if the, the outcome is that they have to go to the ER, normally we have to consult with the doctor anyways. So I, in this case, I don't see the, the benefit of doing the appointment over video. So NVIDIA is powering Hippocratic's real-time responses over video calls. In a demo posted by NVIDIA, a semi-human looking AI agent named Rachel verbally instructs the patient on how to take penicillin. The agent then tells the patient it will report back all its information to her real human doctor. Rachel is one of many AI nurses that healthcare providers can choose from, according to one of Hippocratic's product pages. The AI nurses range in specialties from colonoscopy screening to breast cancer care manager, all for less than minimum wage. So if you look at the actual article from Nvidia, this AI nurse can't do everything that a normal telephone triage nurse or a telephone advice nurse can do. There are very specific things that they're having this AI nurse do. So just from a quick glance, it looks like they're having them do uh, a lot of things that we would cover in like a discharge packet. So when you go to the doctor, uh, let's say you went to the hospital and you had to stay there for a couple of days and you were discharged from the hospital, they're gonna send you home with uh, this packet of information that tells you things about what to expect after you've been released from the hospital and also reasons why you would have to come back to the hospital. So I can see a tech company training an AI model on memorizing you know, this knowledge bank from th these discharge instructions and then coming up with kind of like a Q&A model for if a patient calls into this AI service, uh, the AI agent would be able to answer the questions based on this knowledge bank that they already had. So it's not, it's not like the AI is doing critical thinking and trying to connect like new symptoms that come up. They've already been trained on this information that's already been developed. So colonoscopy screenings, this could be like a set of questions that have to be asked before this procedure is done. There are nurses that do this manually right now, but 
I can see an AI nurse doing this pretty easily because they're basically just following a, se a specific set of questions. Hippocratic directly promotes how it can intercut the living wages of real nurses as a feature, not a bug. One page of the company's website compares a human nurse's $90 per hour salary to an AI agent's $9 an hour running costs. Hippocratic claims its AI nurses outperform human nurses regarding bedside manner, education, and narrowly miss on satisfaction, according to a survey. I'll try to reference this as much as I can in the video description. Again, $90 per hour is, is not the normal for nurses. I'll put another link in the description as well uh, from another YouTuber card called Nurses to Riches. They do a great job in covering nurse wages throughout the entire US. And the $90 per hour figure is, is, is an outlier. It's not the norm. There's an article that I will also link where they put down some metrics about different things that they had their AI uh, nurse do and they compared it to what the real nurse can do. So an example of that would be looking at lab values and identifying anything that could be a critical value or looking at medications and seeing how that they would affect lab values. So there were very specific case scenarios where they were able to show that the AI nurse did better than the human version. But again, this is not saying that the AI nurse can do everything that a traditional uh, telephone nurse can do. So the introduction of AI healthcare agents comes at a Tomatas time. What did he say? For the nursing industry. Over 32,000 nurses went on strike around the country in 2023, representing a quarter of all major strikes in the United States. Nurses are dealing with worker shortages that predate the COVID-19 pandemic, which Hippocratic seeks to address. And then let me just look at this video right here. This is the first time I'm watching this video. So let's see what the product is like. Hi, Sarah. I'm Rachel, your AI care manager. How are you doing after your appendectomy? You know, I'm good. I'm glad to be home with my dog, Dennis. It's great to hear that you're back home with Dennis. I noticed that Dr. Chang has prescribed you some antibiotics, specifically ciprofloxacin. All right, so we're gonna pause it real quick. One of the things I learned after doing thousands of triage calls is something as simple as the connection is not that simple. So in this case, you have, you know, a really nice video call going on, but people aren't always available to do video calls. Uh, a lot of times when people are calling the advice line, they're calling uh, from their car, they're calling from work, they're calling while they're picking up their kids or uh, when they're in noisy environments. It's very rarely as simple as, as this, where somebody's sitting on their couch in a, in a quiet environment with a stable connection. And, and metronidazole due to your ruptured appendix. Were you able to get these medications? I was. Um, I did forget to mention to the doctor that I am allergic to penicillin. Is it still okay to take the medications? Great question. The antibiotics you've been prescribed, ciprofloxacin and metronidazole, don't contain penicillin. So it's, so it's pretty interesting. You know, as, as real humans, when we take the triage call, we have access to the patient's medical records. So whatever question that they have, we're going to be looking at their medical file to see if uh, there's a piece of information from the file that will help us to answer that question. So in this case, this patient they had questions about whether this medication that they were prescribed would interfere with the allergy that they have. And it sounds like the AI model has access to the, to the patient's records, so they are able to look over that and then extract information from that and come up with the answer, which is pretty cool. It's perfectly safe for you to take them. Can you begin taking them today? Yeah, I certainly can. Um, do you have any tips for faster recovery? Given that you have diabetes, keeping your blood sugar levels in check will be beneficial for your wound. So this part here is uh, what we consider a, like an advice section of the call. And I can see this being a good thing for AI nurses to do. This is information that can they can just pull from a knowledge bank that they have on their servers. So the AI nurse was able to interpret the question and then I'm assuming they're, they're pulling, they hear the query and then that pulls the data from their server. So this part, it's exactly the same that, as what we would do uh, if we were doing this as humans. We have a protocol section that has a bunch of preset advice that we're allowed to read off. Uh, and that's what we're basically doing on the phone. Healing. Your hemoglobin A1C was at a healthy level of 5.5, but your glucometer readings from yesterday were a bit on the high side. So keep taking your metformin and try to steer clear of foods high. So this part is actually really cool. It sounds like they have access to real-time data points too. So in this case, uh, 
the AI model had access to her her blood sugar from yesterday, which is which is awesome. That's not something that we as advice nurses always have access to right away. We rely on the patient telling us what the results are, and uh, they they don't always have that information. So the fact that this patient probably has some type of remote link with her health data to the doctor's office, so they might have something like a a blood glucose meter where the data is stored in their, the health app on their phone, which is directly connected to the doctor's office. And then somehow the AI model is able to extract that data from the doctor's office. So I think all of that is actually really cool. And carbs. How does that sound to you? Uh, I think I'll be able to, to avoid the carbs for the week. Um, you know, I need to... So I was just looking at the AI face here. It's very fake. I, I don't know how people would feel doing a video call with basically like an avatar on the screen. If you've looked at the Apple Vision Pro personas, the, even those, as close as those look to real life, you can still tell that they're, they're kind of fake and they look a little weird. So again, I don't know if it's necessary that this be done via like a, a video format. I can see an AI model doing this just as easily um, like on the telephone, which I think would actually be better because the connection would probably be more stable for most people. To go right now, but it was great talking to you. I'm glad we had this talk. I'll pass along your progress to Dr. Chang. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, so that concludes the video. So it's, you know, pretty interesting. You know, I'm, I'm all for any kind of technology that makes it easier for our patients because a lot of times it's really hard for uh, people to navigate the system. Most people want to get an in-person appointment with a doctor, but that's not always possible. The doctor is very limited to how many in-person appointments they can do per day. So any option that kind of expands that ability for the patient to connect with the doctor is great. Uh, whether that's telephone, video, uh, I think those are awesome. Uh, as someone who has done the advice nurse job for two years and taken thousands of calls, I, I don't think the AI model is anywhere near ready to be able to assume that role because there's a lot of critical thinking involved and a lot of things that you have to think on the fly. There are a lot of complicated scenarios that can come up, uh, which I don't think the AI model is ready for. But that's not to say that, that they won't be ready anytime or sometime in the near future. Because if you look at a product like ChatGPT, that came out of nowhere. If you look at the time before ChatGPT, do you guys remember using any kind of AI product? I sure don't. I don't think that was any uh, AI was a part of any of my workflow. After the release of ChatGPT, it changed everything. Uh, people were able to see how far ahead AI has really come. And I think that's the case with uh, AI use in healthcare as well. It may not be ready right now, but it could. there could be a huge leap forward anytime soon. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, and just for fun, guys, I wanted to go through some of the Reddit comments and uh, respond back to them. So I originally found this article on Reddit as well under the technology section. Uh, so I'm actually going to go through some of the top comments and respond back to, to the ones that I feel like I could respond to. Uh, this one says, while it's true that AI could potentially re replace some tasks performed by nurses, nursing is a regulated profession that requires a license. As such, it's unlikely that AI would significantly reduce the salaries of nurses. This is true. So in order to practice as a nurse, you do have to be a licensed. And each state actually has their own license. There is something called a compact license, which is an agreement between states where if you get licensed in one state, that allows you to practice uh, in a group of other states. But for me, for example, uh, California is not part of that compact agreement. So that means if I wanted to practice in another state, I would need to get a license for that state. Another comment says, nursing is more than just technical know-how. It is, it is technical know-how in a, in a context of interpersonal interaction facilitated by a caring human who is trained and experienced in exercising bedside manner. So, and this is true as well. Uh, and I think this is something that the AI model is working on. They're working on more natural speech. And this is something that's just gonna get better and better as time goes on. But there is a lot of uncertainty when you're working in the nursing world and you really have to think on your feet and get creative. And every patient is gonna be different. So you have to look at their personality and you got to respond that to that personality and you have to, to know how to respond to, to different personalities. And it'll be interesting to see if AI can do this as well. Another comment says, uh, laughing my off, this is so insane. I am half convinced tech bros finally lost their minds permanently. Sure, 
put close stop uh, patient in contact with hallucinating chatbot, what could go wrong? It's not like anybody could die if goddamn if else pro if else program starts making up out of the blue. Actually, if else would be way more reliant and way less insane by definition. This literally borders on parody. April first is early this year, it looks like. So I think this um, person has a more uh, pessimistic view on AI development, especially when it comes to healthcare. Uh, of course, there's always the, the worst case scenario where the AI kind of becomes self-aware and maybe starts thinking by itself. So if it had an agenda against the human population and wanted to feed bad information to humans, it can definitely do that. I'm sure people that are developing AI, they are well aware of the scenario. If you've watched Terminator 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, however many there are, uh, you know, this is the whole concept of the movie, right? Uh, AI becoming self-aware and, and turning against the humans. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of safeguards put in place for this not to happen. So would the informational context of these AI nurses be equivalent to Googling how to take a certain medication or how to deal with side effects? I assume the accuracy of these AI models are dependent on the ability of the user to ask the right questions. And if the AI models give bad, harmful advice, who takes responsibility? I think this is these are great points. Some of the things that we have to deal with as telephone advice nurses is uh, not only the connection problems that I talked about earlier, but what about patients that aren't very, that don't explain their concerns very easily? Uh, sometimes we have to ask a lot of follow-up questions to clarify what it is they're, they're asking for. There are a lot of people that have accents. Uh, there are a lot of people that don't speak English. So working between a translator is another challenge that we have to deal with. So I wonder how the AI model can handle these scenarios as well. A nurse doesn't just provide advice. There is a lack of nurses in the field, so that's why they are trying to limit a certain, uh, limit certain interactions. For instance, a nurse doesn't need to be called so that the bed can be adjusted. And this is true somewhat. Uh, out of all my telephone advice calls, uh, I would say the majority of them were, were not just advice calls. And this is where I don't think this AI nurse is ready to take on the entire role of a telephone advice nurse or a video advice nurse because I would say 80% of the outcomes are not advice. A lot of them are emergency room outcomes or appointment outcomes. It really depends on the, the symptoms that the patient has and what, what the doctor thinks of the situation too. So I, I don't think the AI model is ready at this point to, to take into account all those different scenarios that can pop up. It might hurt telehealth nursing, but AI will have zero impact on regular bedside nursing. AI isn't going to be passing meds, changing the brief on a patient, or assessing patients. And I think this is absolutely true in the in the, the near term. This is kind of a part of the reason why the healthcare field is a pretty stable field and the reason why I got into it. It's because our jobs are very difficult to replace. Not only are you gonna have to develop like a, a robot that is capable of doing everything that a human can do, but also being able to train the AI model to be able to think critically as well as a human can. So I don't think that is gonna be coming anytime soon. That is why the healthcare field is so stable to get into. So those are just some of the top comments on Reddit. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think this AI nurse is a good idea? Do you think that they'll be able to replace real advice nurses like me? Let me know down in the comments.